Hey everybody, today I have my cousin's 1963 Galaxy 500 two-door, I guess you would call it a kind of a fastback. It's got that beautiful bump here in the roof, kind of like imitating like a convertible top. This car is a true survivor. It looks like there's a lot of original metal in it. There's a little bit of Bondo in the rear quarters, but not a lot. But this is a 390 car, absolutely beautiful. Both sides, it's got three inch lowering blocks in the back. And it also has skirts. It actually has a really, really good stance. Um, underneath the hood, we have a 390. Let me uh, get this open. 390 with a Holly four barrel. It's got vintage air, air conditioning, power steering with one of the Borgensen uh, power steering boxes. And uh, very nice. It still has the single pot master cylinder and that's part of what we're gonna be doing today on this vehicle. It might, this might turn into a few videos. So he wants power disc brakes put on the car because it's a bear to stop. So we have a power brake and master cylinder to put on it. And then he also bought the whole kit. We got rotors, we got brackets, more brackets, brake pads from master power brakes, uh, new hoses, there's the hardware bearings, GM style calipers, and there's the other rotor. Um, unfortunately, the instructions they sent for this car are for the four piston like original equipment calipers that came on like mustangs and the instructions do not go with this kit so we're just going to have to fudge it as we go it shouldn't be that hard to figure out uh, these are going to bolt on to the spindles and then these brackets will bolt onto there and then the calipers will be bolting onto there so we're going to go ahead and do the conversion on the front first and then we'll worry about the master cylinder. We're gonna to have to run new lines. I'm gonna to have to run new lines up to the master cylinder because there is a distribution block down here that is gonna to have to go. So I think I can take the uh, rear brake line and I'm gonna run it up through this area here and then run two new lines for the front. But that will have to mock all up, but we're gonna go ahead and get the front disc brakes on it so we'll get that taken care of. So, we're gonna put it back in the air. Up. Oh, do you wanna see what it looks like underneath? We'll put it up in the air and we'll give you a little video of it from underneath. All right, I forgot to give you a shot of the back of the turbine style taillights and the big Galaxy 500. This is where the fuel tank is. You pull that down and that's how you access the fuel tank. So underneath we have a brand new fuel tank. We've got, um, the mufflers are all the way in the back here on both sides. Nice chrome tips as we walk on up. We got a Ford 9 inch. We got three inch lowering blocks, new shocks underneath original floor pans. They look very nice. It's got a little tiny rust hole right there, crack, but not bad. Somebody looks like they've put bushings between the body and the frame recently. Uh, it's supposed to have a fairly new transmission in it. There's the transmission cooler instead of running the lines up. It does look like the rear seal's got a leak. It looks like the, um, the shift linkage has a little bit of a leak. Front end's all original. Here's the back of the drum brakes. Springs up front, new shocks. Like I said, everything around this car is very, very nice. Very, very nice. Um, Glass packs. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Glass packs. These are glass pack, glass pack mufflers. Um, you can see right here, look, there's even a date code. There's a date code right there on this quarter panel. Like I said, there might be, there's a little bit of filler there, but that's not bad. This quarter has a little bit more filler, but at least the inside is beautiful. It's got the uh, um, skirts on it. We'll have to take off when we bleed in the brakes. The rockers are beautiful. Uh, this car is awesome. This car is just awesome. 
unbelievable how awesome this car is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get the tires off and get this all this old drum stuff off and uh, start assembling this kit if we can figure out how it goes. The biggest problem that I'm gonna have is I know this bolts to the spindle. I know this bracket bolts there. I'm trying to figure out how this bracket bolts because I'm not sure about what's going on with that bolt there. And like I said, the GM calipers are pretty self-explanatory. The bearings are all here. But uh, it would have been nice if the uh, kit would have come with the right instructions. Alrighty, we'll get a work. We'll get working on this. We'll get the tires off. We'll start disassembling the uh, the brakes on it. All right, we're gonna start taking the drums off of this 63 Galaxy to start doing the disc brake conversion. So I happen to have a hub puller pliers. These are very nice. If you don't have a set, comes right off. Uh, you know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a pair of gloves on. So while we're putting a pair of gloves on, I'll just keep talking. So now you have a Carter key through here and a retainer for the nut. So we'll go ahead and put the gloves on real quick because it's greasy, 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 nasty, nasty, nasty. So, um, yeah, whoever did this barely, look at this, they, they shouldn't have done that. You know, they reused a Carter key that already was cut and it was barely holding it in. Because if this would fall out, then this retainer doesn't retain the nut. And the nut could come unscrewed and somebody had that pretty tight that was a little too tight um so then out comes your your this is the actual axle up front because on this kit here we're going to reuse the spindles and the axles and everything on this so there's the nut comes off there is the bearing actually looks not it even, looks really good no burning so it's probably been replaced and now the drum should just slide right off there oh, we wow. go and there's the inner bearing and the inner seal and uh this thing has wow look at this it says wagner lockheed made in usa that is an old wheel cylinder so is it leaking no it doesn't look like it's leaking is it leaking nope no nope, doesn't look like it's leaking i wonder if they're actually he used to play about an extremely hard brake pedal and sometimes what happens is is that going is, did that move in yeah it's moving a yeah little that bit. one's moving in let's see that one's moving in so Maybe that wheel cylinder's side. that wheel cylinder's actually good so now that we have that off uh, let's see there's a big bolt up here yeah unfortunately we're gonna have to disassemble the brakes because there's a bolt at the top here that we're gonna have to get out we're gonna have to take out this bolt and this bolt and then at the top here there is another bolt so let me go get the rest of my brake tools and we'll get all the stuff taken off so it, it does have a bad brake shoe there's the rivets that hold it on it's got a nice huge crack and parts missing so let's go ahead and get uh, these brake shoes off these are 11s by two and a halfs so. and when we let the car down you know what we need we need to get the box out of the trunk and we'll put all his stuff back in a box but it's in the trunk but i i shut the trunk all the way okay. so not a big deal oh and i should have showed you all that little cable that runs through here and down to here, that's how the self-adjuster works. When you back the car up, the shoes rack back and forth and it causes this thing to go up and down, which screws the screw. So, I'm gonna need that either. This is something I've never, hey, you wanna see something? This is, I've never seen this before on a car. Look at this. It actually has two brake hold downs on the one shoe and one over here. I have never, ever seen that. So these springs, these are the shoe retaining springs. Here. Yeah, some of the stuff looks pretty wasted. Yeah, you know it's it's old. Like I said, this car, I don't know what the I don't know what the speedometer says uh, on it. Ninety-five thousand miles. Oh, uh, I kind of kind of believe it. I don't think it's over that. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. 
Very nice car. So now these should just come right on off. So there's your your shoe assembly. I just left the spring connected. So just set that on the ground over there. And we'll go ahead and pull these out and this out. And here's those. All right, and see this wheel cylinder is held in by this big nut. So we got to get this big nut taken out, take the wheel cylinder off, get the hose off. We have a new hose and everything for that. So let me find out what size this is and we'll be back. All right, the nut is an inch and a quarter and it looks like my... Got enough swing here. And then the wheel cylinder just pops off. I gotta take the line off, forgot to take the line off. So the line is just back here, how's this going? So this line here screws into the wheel cylinder. I don't know if I have you on frame. This line just screws into the wheel cylinder and then up here you have the brake line. So I'm gonna go ahead and break the brake line free pull this clip out, get this line down, and then I'll unscrew it so I can get the wheel cylinder completely out. I got the brake line off. It just unscrews out of the wheel cylinder, but you have to take this part down to get it out. So now that comes right off. So there's the wheel cylinder. So now we're going to go ahead and take these bolts out and uh, let's take a look. Not sure what size they are. We have to figure out how this is going to come apart next. All right, now we're going to go ahead and take the two bolts off here. They're 9 16 Fine thread, fine thread bolt and nut. So, I right, said so I'm gonna save everything for him. And here I'm gonna have to move you guys over there. There's that other bolt and lock washer. So I think this is just it's just held on by that uh, by that nut. So I think yep, a little tap of the hammer, off comes the backing plate. Off comes the backing plate, and there we have that. I think. This is going to have to come out of here, too. Like I said, I don't have uh, very good instructions with this set. But let's take a look and see what we've got here. And there's a, there's a right and a left for this. So... That doesn't look right. What about like that? I'm thinking that this must bolt up to there. Maybe I do have the wrong bracket. They're not marked right or left or anything. Let's try this one. So, because I do believe the caliper is going to sit behind 
like like so. So if this sits here like this, yeah, I do believe that's how it's going to go. This is going to bolt there. That is going to bolt there. And then this is going to go up there. And then these two, yep, those two line up there. This goes here and this goes there. And there's a spacer up here. All right, let me get everything. Let me get this nut taken off and get that out of here so I can get this stuff mocked up in there. I do believe this is the right way. So now we have to take this off. It's 13 sixteenths. We're up at the 13 sixteenths. I broke it free. So this is going to come and unbolt. And that's what that looks like. Like I said, I'm going to save all his old stuff. So I did find out that these two pieces are the same. So there's not a right and a left. There's, it doesn't matter. But on this one here, this is going to matter. So I do believe it's going to be... This is going to bolt up there, and then that's going to bolt up there. There's a spacer. So it's going to take a bunch of hands to get this together. So let me open up the hardware kit, and we'll get this in to see if it looks right. But I think it's going to be right. All righty. I've got it all mocked up. I figured out where all the bolts go. So you have the long bolt that goes through with a washer, your spacer, a washer, and then it's got the nut on the back. Then you have this bolt that goes through here, which is the same same diameter as this bolt, but this bolt is actually longer. And then this bolt here is smaller that goes through here. And then this one is basically the same size as this one. So now you have to get your Allen and tighten all these up and torque them down. And then I started trying to figure out how this one goes together. So like I said, if you look, that's a, this one takes the long one, that takes the smaller one, and then those two are the same size there. So I have that kind of mocked up um, there. So let me get all this stuff tightened up and we'll get to packing the bearings. I need to clean that out a little bit better. We'll get some brake clean and clean that up. But we'll get all this stuff torqued down. All righty, I have this one bolted up um, and it's in. What did I do with the... So you need an Allen wrench. These are all the same size. This is a different size. I have the Allen wrenches right here. You're going to need a 732nd and a 316th Allen wrench. And then back here, it's a 916 916th. This one's half inch. This one's 916. Then you're gonna have to tighten this one up. I used a 22 millimeter on the back here and a 13 16 here. So all this is now tightened up. So now we have to, the rotor's next. So with the rotor, there is something in the instructions about the fins and the rotors, the rotation direction. So I figured out which rotor goes where. This should be the passenger side one. It came with new bearings and new grease seals. Yep. So we are going to pack the bearings and get the bearings put in and get the rotor installed on the car oh and i also started chiseling away at the 60 years of old hard grease up there to clean it up a little bit clean this up a little bit not much so uh pack the bearing time Alrighty, we got the rotor for the right side we've got new bearings to go in it so I already sprayed this out with brake clean and we cleaned it up. It comes with new races in it. So uh, first thing we're going to do, this is a bearing packer. It's, they're really nice to have. Um, you drop the bearing in like this. I usually go and use the vise and then you push that there and then you get a shot right in there. And as you're pushing down on that, the grease comes through and as you see, it packed the bearing all the way around. See the grease coming out? So they're really nice to have, it makes it really easy. So once we have the bearing packed, now we're gonna take and get two fingers full of grease, and we're gonna go into the hub, 
and we're going to put grease into the hub probably get two more fingers of grease you don't want it completely packed but you want enough grease in there rolling around all right so now the bearing is packed and i have enough grease on that where i'm just going to drop that right there in there we're going to roll that around we have well oh, here it is have the new seal this is the grease seal we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of grease on that uh, let me set that down let me get the rag all right and then we're just going to go ahead and tap this grease seal in with a hammer i really don't want to take my glove off let me wipe hate wasting gloves so now we're just gonna boy how did, how did I know I was gonna have a problem with this um, I can't seem to get the grease seal in, but we'll, I'll get the grease seal in. So then I'm gonna go ahead and take the other, this is the outer bearing. We'll go ahead and put that on there. Same thing, and you push down on it until grease comes through. All right, let me get this grease seal in and we'll come back and put the rotor on the car. All right, well you saw I was fighting with this grease seal. So I have this piece of exhaust that I grabbed so what's good about this is this does two things. This is the grease cap for the outside. This fits perfectly. So when I hammer this grease cap on, I'm not going to bend it all up and beat it all up. So this is the other, this is a different size. So I just went ahead and laid that down on top of the seal and I used a rubber mallet and drove it home. So I have fixed that. All right. So just, just keep rolling. So, all right. So now we're going to pull some of this grease that I put in there around this race. And we already packed that bearing. So I'm gonna grab this bearing. I guess I'm not gonna grab this bearing. Yeah, here we go. And we'll walk over to the car. And then I also too like to put just a light coating of grease up in here because that's where the seal rides. I already put grease on the seal and just put a light coat of grease on this all right so let's get the rotor up on here all right and it looks like i have assembled this properly because there's plenty of clearance so now there's also all this new hardware that goes on so we have a brand new washer that goes on next and we have a brand new retaining nut that we'll go ahead and put on all right so what i like to do i like to spin it and tighten it tight then you back off and then you just barely snug it so that's pretty good so now we'll get our We'll get our nut retainer and a new carter key that goes through this way. So we have to line this up. Oh, it's got my glove. So then this will go through there like that. Now see, when we took it apart, that carter key was barely in. So this is how I like to do it. I like to pull this around. I'll cut this end off. And then I will cut this end off and bring that there. And, uh, you know, I should have turned the light back. Should have turned the light back on. So now, we have the hub nut cap, the cap. There it 
this. And see, I didn't bend the hub cap up, the grease cap up. So there's that now. So now I have to figure out which caliper goes on this side, which is going to be here. Come over here. I'll just explain. So this is the caliper that's going to be for the right side. The caliper is going to sit in there, and the and the bleeder has to be up. If I was going to put this one on this side here, the bleeder's down. You cannot have the bleeder down. So this is the upside, and those are the pins. Get the pins out. So on the brake pads. So this is a wear indicator right here, and you want the wear indicator to scream when they're backing up. So you want to put this pad in, this is the back pad, goes here. So as the rotor spins backward, it'll drag on that, creating a noise. So I'm just going to mock these up for you right now. That goes in there. There's a clip that retains that brake pad. And now the outer pad is the same. I mean, both outer pads are the same. I'm going to tighten the shim up. And then, okay, see how loose this pad is in here? So this is what you have to do. You have to bend these tabs here, that one there, and that one there, to make this brake pad fit in here tight. If you don't, sometimes when you step on the brake, you'll get a rattle. But I don't care about the rattle right this second, because I just want to mock this thing up and make sure that everything is going to line up properly. Let me go get the pins. These are the caliper pins. I guess you got a greasy sliding. Yeah, pin. it looks like there's already grease in here. And I think there's grease on the things. I'll double check them. But I just wanted to mock it up first to make sure that I have the bracketry right because there's no instructions in the kit on how the bracket goes. So this is exactly how it goes. As you see right here, the bleeder valve is up. So there's the caliper. Like I said, I'm gonna bend these tabs down and, and fix this shim. And I'll put some um, grease here so they won't make any noise. Uh, we also have, um, I haven't opened them up yet. I have the brake hoses and two new, uh, bracketry for the brake hoses. So I'm not sure, like I said, no instructions in the kit. Let's just take these out and let's just go ahead and hold them over here and see what it looks like. Doesn't say anything left or right. No, I do believe they're the same. They're the same. Okay. They're the same. So this is, yeah, this is going to go into the caliper here. And then this is going to run up and go in here. And I do believe I'll just take this, this is the wrong thing to hold this bracket. So I'll use the, uh, I guess I'll use the new brackets that come with the kit. <coughs> Excuse me, there's two new brackets. Uh, yeah, the razor knife. All right, there's everything. So well, I guess it doesn't really matter if I use the old brackets or the new, but it came with new ones. Came with the shims. No, it's not, these aren't the shims. These are actually what lock the brake hose in. Yeah. So I've got these. So there you go. We've got this done properly. I'm going to run a new brake line from here over because I'm putting a new power booster and dual bowl master cylinder with a proportioning valve but i thought i'd do a quick video on this i guess this will be part number one number one so i'm gonna leave this here it's real simple you just have to bolt the brake hose on oh let me show let me come back over to the brake hose so just for people that do not know this brake hose has what's called a banjo fitting and you have two copper washers and that one's kind of bent that doesn't look good so where is oh great oh they're in here luckily they gave us some extra copper washers so to bolt the hose to the caliper 
you put a copper washer, and then it goes through the brake hose, then you put another car copper washer, and then you tighten this down, and those copper washers are what seals it. You can't take and put one washer or two, you don't put two washers on one side or anything like that. You've got to do it just the way I said. One washer on the outside, one washer on the inside. And here, I'll show you right here. I have the old caliper. I mean, the other new caliper. This comes out, and then this will just screw in here. This bracketry is made to hold that brake hose. And then all I have to do now is tighten that up, and it's ready to go. So, um, I think that's going to be it for how to install the front disc brakes on a 63 Galaxy with the GM style caliper. This caliper is found on S10, Astrovan, Astrovans, um, some light duty pickup trucks like 1500. Actually, this caliper might be very similar to what they had on the earlier um, like 18 van. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna come back and, and fix the brake pad and get everything lubed up and get the new hose up here and installed, ready for the new brake line. We'll do the other side and then we'll start mocking up the booster and the master cylinder in part two. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. You can always do that in that corner down there. Please give me a thumbs up. The thumbs up really help out of getting my videos out for other people to see. And this is absolutely a good kit. Wish the instructions was a little bit better on this beautiful 63 Galaxy 500 390. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching.